Well, this is Ian O'Byrne from Digitally Literate. I'm going to take a little bit of a tour in my digital vault now. I've had a series of posts and videos about my knowledge management system and thinking about my use of Obsidian. So I want to give you a little bit of a tour to see how we set things up here. Please keep in mind that this is just my system. Your results may vary. Whatever system works best for you is incredible. I also want to indicate that this is a work in progress. So there will be changes that are made over time. This is a way for me to document what I'm currently doing so that I can track what changes that I make in the future. I'm really focused here on process and less so the ultimate product. And so what that means for this video and for guidance for you, if this is the way that you wanna head and thinking about development of a knowledge management system or a digital sandbox is really not the need to think about, I need to use Obsidian to get this done. The, the product that you use, the platform, the service, to me is less important. What's the most important is the process that you're using here and then also thinking about how you might change that over time as these products come and go. So let's get into it. This is my Obsidian Vault. So if I go down into my settings, I mean, I can go into the vault itself and I can see that this is my main vault that I use. In the future, I'll talk about the plugins and the settings and stuff like that. But Pretty much when I start things off, I have a home page that is this here. This is the page that is going to be the public facing page that's on my digital garden. This changes over time, but for right now, I'm basically just indicating what do I do, what do I research, what other content that you might find in here and what is a digital garden. Once again, I very rarely use this page. This is basically something that is forward facing, something that will be public to the audience on the digital garden. Within that, I have four different folders or directories or basically spots that I save information. So I have consume, curate, create, and meta. Meta is basically all of the files and materials that I need to make this site run. So I have assets, which is basically any images that I would save or use in my posts and content. Attachments, that's PDFs and other documents that I would upload to the vault. Obsidian uses Markdown, so these are plain text files, and I'll show you that in a minute. So basically, any images are going to be saved elsewhere. Any attachments are saved elsewhere. Excaladraw, I'm starting to use a little bit more, but I have not used it as often. The most important thing in here is, one, the templates. So once again, thinking about process, I use a couple templates to help me organize my ideas. So if I have a book template that is saved and it basically is a way for me to think about how I organize and what information I want for the book. So every time I read a book, I will leave a review, I'll basically break it down, and this template helps me make sure that everything is the same over time. You can see this is all just marked down, so this is content that would be added into the file. So the templates are very important to me, but then also I have a, and then a change log. So these documents are basically uh, pages for me to remember decisions that I've made over time. So as I come in and out of the garden, as I make decisions, as I use my knowledge management system, what I've been doing is I've been using tools like ChatGPT or some generative AI models to help me organize content here. And I forget, and also the generative AI tools, the AI assistants that I use, they also forget decisions that we've made. So one of the things that I've been doing is basically just taking this change log and copy pasting it into ChatGPT or whatever tool I'm using and say, we've done a lot of work the last two, three days. This is my change log. Can you please update it so we know what is the current state of affairs of the knowledge management system? And this tends to be, it's not perfect, but it's a relatively good way to remind me and remind whatever model I'm using, whatever generative tool I'm using, sort of like where we are right now. So I'm just drawing a line in the sand to indicate what has been done up to this point. And then the guide page is just a way to understand this. At some point, I will most likely share this with the public on the digital garden, but it's just a way for me to think about what I need to do and where I need to do it. So the meta folder is just a lot of the content that most of it will probably be not be available to the public, but it's stuff that Obsidian needs to run. But then in terms of process, most content that I consume first goes into the consume folder. So this is content that comes in through different services. So if I 
bookmark something. If I read a web page online or I want to read it later, I'll save it to articles. If I read a book or I'm, you know, I want to read a book, I'll save it into the books folder. Fleeting notes is a way for me to just capture little quick ideas that I have and things that I want to remember later. I'm merging that between fleeting notes and inbox, probably just going to stick with inbox as a place that I drop stuff. So if on my phone and I take a quick audio note or a text note, or if I take a picture, I'll drop it in the inbox. And the idea is that the inbox should be empty. And so I want to come through every day or so and just process these notes as they come in. Papers, these are academic papers that I am reading and using Zotero or other tools to annotate and mark up. People, that's going to be authors of podcasts, authors of publications, authors of books so that I can track their work over time. So if I have an author of a book that also has a digital, has a podcast or a YouTube video, you know, they might also have a blog. I want to be able to track those across the different spaces and see different ideas that they have over time. Podcast is obviously different podcasts that I listen to. I will mark those up and annotate those and take notes using some online tools. And so I can basically keep track of things that I'm learning as I listen to podcasts. So the idea is that Content as I consume it goes right into this consumption folder. Articles pretty much stay there. Books pretty much stay there. Papers from Zotero and elsewhere stay there. The people notes stay there. The podcast stay there. As an example, the books folder. So if I look at this, I can look at A Brief History of Earth. This is a note for the book. This is a book that I recently read. You can see my review of it up top. You can see the cover of the book. And this whole note is something that will be public and it will show up on my digital garden. And then I can also reference this and use this elsewhere. So a lot of the books will be public. These book notes will be public. The articles won't be. I may or may not share the papers and the podcast and the people. But one of the things is that for the most part, this is other people's ideas, other people's content that I'm trying to make sense of. This is stuff as I go through my day, I grab it and I save it and consume. I try to mark up and annotate it and make sense of it and pre-digest it a little bit, consume it a little bit, and make sense of it. From there, then we move to the curate. So curate is where the, the most important thing here is this notes folder. So as I consume content, I try to make you know a little bit of sense of it. And if I have ideas, as soon as those ideas are, are from me, as soon as I generate new ideas or content, that's when I'm moving stuff over into notes. And so if I go into the notes, I can see that I have this idea about atomic design. So I want to try and make sense of what is atomic design. These are my notes on it. And these notes on atomic design are going to link out to stuff that comes in through the consumption folder. And then it will also link to other notes here in the vault. And I'll talk about that in future videos. So the idea is that first off, Notes, this is stuff in Curate. These are ideas that I'm pulling threads together and I'm having some sort of aha moment to try to make sense of things. I also have here in Curate this idea of MOCs or maps of content. So a map of content is this idea that if I have all of these, my data view is not working. Actually, it is. So the idea here with an MOC or a map of content is if I go into consumption and I go to books, this list of all the books, I've got a hundred or more books that I've read. This list of books might be a little bit challenging, a little bit of a challenge to make sense of. So if I go to the MOC or the map of content, I can go in and I can see what all of these look like over time. Okay, so I can scroll through and say, oh, I forgot that I read A New Culture of Learning. Let me open that book up and now I can see the book note for that. So the idea here is that the curate space is an idea, is a space where I'm taking some of my ideas, I'm pulling these threads together and trying to make sense of it. As I continue to edit and revise my knowledge management system here, I'm going to have different. So I'm going to have one on my podcast that I listen to or journals and articles and research pieces that I read. So this will be a way to pull these threads together and try to connect the dots. So consumption is primarily other people's content. Curation is where I'm pulling these threads together and trying to make sense of it. The last piece is where I have output. And this is the creation side of things. So this is very robust at this point. So one of the areas that I have is my blog. So I will have the digital sandbox. I mean, sorry, the digital garden. I will uh, basically take a lot of the content from 
Uh, my newsletter has lived on a, a site of its own. I'm taking all of the issues. I've processed about 200 of my issues so far, and I'm saving these issues here in uh, the digital garden in Obsidian so that I can basically share these out. So this newsletter section will soon contain all 400 issues of my newsletter, all in the digital garden, all saved in my knowledge vault, all tagged so that I can link it out to other content. Going back to the blog, I also have the, the blog with a couple hundred posts in there. And so my process will include ideas as they come up through consumption. Those will get turned into drafts of blog posts. And then ultimately when I publish it, it will come down here and it will be a blog post. So this is an example of a recently published blog post. So you have the title, you have all the materials there. And as an example, I have a, this is a recent blog post that I just sent out. I'll do a more in-depth review of this, but you can see that I have links to content that's over in Consume and Curate. I have a, an initial overview of what that blog post might look like, a draft of it, key points that I want to make, and then I go in and have a secondary draft. And then at the bottom, I have the final draft of this that is public. So the idea is that in Create, in this blog directory, you're going to have blog posts. You're going to see the evolution over time. It's going to be tagged and linked to other content in my blog, in my vault and my digital garden. And then at some point, this will be available on my blog, but it's also going to be here in the vault. So you'll be able to see those links across. So I have blog posts in here. I talked about the newsletter. I also am an educator, so any online classes that I have created and shared, I'm going to put those here in the vault. I have one of my first ones that's already in class that I created a couple of years ago, but what I will do over time is in my digital garden, I'm going to add all of my classes, all of my content so that people can go in and they can basically access these classes. But then also, once again, because it's in the vault, it's in the digital garden, it will link back to other content that's in the vault. So I'll have my classes in here. I have one, I will have more. The newsletters in there, videos, any YouTube videos that I have, I will put the script in here and I will start doing more of my videos from my Obsidian vault and just reading the script off of there and jumping out to other content as I need it. So I'll have my scripts for videos and, and links to the videos here, my blog posts, my newsletter issues, but then also, and then that section will link to my Vita, my resume, and then that will link to publications here in the digital garden. So at some point in Create, I will have a section that is just my scholarly publications, and it will link out to journal, or journal articles, book chapters, stuff like that. And the last thing is projects. So as I work on different projects over time, I'll have a little folder in here to save those projects. So if I work on uh, a research project, I'll save it in there so I can have all the notes in the same space. Uh, so once again, this is my vault. This is the, the backbone, the behind the scenes of my digital garden. If I look through this, one of the things that's really interesting is if I look at, as an example, I go to create and I go to my newsletter, I can go down to one of the most recent newsletter issues. And so I can look at this and up top I have my properties. So if I click on this and I go to the source. So this is Markdown. This is a plain text file. So you can see it's pretty much just text pieces in here. This is what my newsletter issue looks like in Markdown. If I look at the, the reader side, so I can see the different tags. I can follow those tags out. I can follow related pages out. I can see the issue and, and read this, and this will show up. This already does show up on my digital garden. I just haven't launched it yet. And then over here on the side, I currently have this set up so I can see the outline. This is just a way to help me think about my writing and work over time and make sure that I am filling out the appropriate places in the right spot. And then down here, this is the, let me zoom in here a little bit. So this is my nodes. This is one of the things that most people like about Obsidian is that you can see the different notes. So one of the interesting things is this is all my blog posts and this is my newsletters. So you can see that things are basically all clustered around one another. And then in the future, what I'll be able to do is people can look in, I can look in and say, okay, this is my newsletter and this is my blog post, but what is this little nexus of ideas over here? Okay, 
So this is stuff that I link to New York Times or here's stuff about a different topic. So the idea is that people will be able to go in and access all my notes and connect them to my different ideas and find out where I got them from. I can extend those ideas, but then I can also use the graph view to make future connections. So hopefully this was interesting. This has been a project that's taken me some time. I'm going to continue to edit this over basically the foreseeable future, but this is a way for me to just stop for a minute and record what I've done up till now. Interested to get more of your feedback? Thank you.